So now we're joined by Alice Wolt, who is here on behalf of Yes on Initiative 122 on its election Seattle. So go ahead with up to five minutes to present what is Yes on I-122. Good to be here tonight. Um, thanks for doing these interviews one more time. And uh, I was here two years ago and um, talking about fair election in Seattle. And we did a campaign and a very low budget, and we lost by 1,400 votes uh, in the citywide election. And so we're at it again this year. Only uh, honest election in Seattle has more elements to it than just public financing. Uh, we do want to bring public financing back to the city of Seattle, which it had you know, a while in the past before the state made, banned it um, from uh, jurisdictions to have public financing. So, you know, we do a lot of lip service of uh, government of, by, and for the people. Uh, but anymore, the of, by, and for the people is more like of, by, and for the wealthy. And people are actually catching on to that. I think uh, the initiative uh, 735 that's collecting signatures, um, more and more people know what Citizens United is, and they know the difficulties of people who are recent candidates, good candidates, that can't raise the kind of money that it takes anymore to compete with candidates that either have deep pockets themselves or know people with deep pockets. So we have lost a lot of our government of by and for the people. And so Initiative 122, through uh, transparency and through accountability, which I heard those words used quite a bit tonight from other candidates, uh, and through public financing, uh, we can restore this in the city of Seattle. And uh, we can do it. Uh, having only lost by 1,400 votes and polling this time is more positive than it was when we uh, started the last time around. Uh, we think that we have a great chance of reinstituting public finance to financing and doing some other things that will create kind of accountability and um, and just you know uh, candidates who are more diverse and represent uh, the diversity of this city and can run without having the uh, wealthy developers on their side, the wealthy downtown business interests on their side. Um, I don't, you know, looking around this table, there are people around this table that deserve to be candidates, um, who have uh, good public policy minds, you have, are smart, you're you could do it, and this would help. So what this does is it um, it limits corporations and wealthy individuals. Um, it provides a uh, scheme of, of uh, public financing that um, by raising some initial money with small contributions, uh, you can become eligible for the public financing, and uh, every registered voter in the city of Seattle uh, would will get a um, four twenty-five dollar vouchers, and you can give them to any candidate of your choice that is that has opted for public financing. Um, all four twenty-five vouchers to one candidate, or you can spread them out. And the candidates are, are um, have pledged to stay within the limits of the campaign. Uh, the limits that are now $750 would be dropped for everybody to $500. So even uh, the candidates who don't opt into public financing would have to stay within uh, $500 contributions for uh, a election, both the primary and the general. It would stop the revolving door of uh, formerly elected people who leave office would not be able to lobby the city for three years. 
uh, corporations that are doing business with the city and have big city funding, uh, big grants from the city, would not be able to give money to candidates. So those kind of accountabilities are built into this, and um, there are a lot of people that are supporting it. Great. So I'll open up to follow-up questions. Uh, I have one. Uh, so we interviewed the opposition on Thursday, mm -hmm. and one thing that the spokesperson for the no side um, kept saying and uh, really repeated <coughs> as a theme was that this, um, the vouchers would actually um, uh, embolden special interests. That special interests be, would be able to turn out their members to um, turn in their vouchers. So I wonder if you just respond to that. Would uh, honest election Seattle actually do the opposite of what it intends and support special interests and in their buying of elections? Well, I would hope that the 36th district Democrats would be a special interest and you could, you know, round up people that are in the are members of the party and, and, um, and, you know, encourage them to support candidates that you're supporting. So, yeah. If you consider special interest a whole range of special interest, I suppose you could say yes. That that it would encourage it would encourage people to be engaged. Okay, it's not that they are, you know, that that special interests are going to be going out there and batting on, you know, banging on people's doors. Can I have your vouchers? Can I have your vouchers? <laughs> 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 of 1% 
of people in Seattle supporting candidates. I mean, that's ridiculous. And so, so then you wonder why there's such a poor turnout. So there is a problem. And, uh, you know, the, the whole corruption issue may not work so well in, in Seattle. Uh, it certainly works a lot of other places that people feel that there is corruption going on, whether there is or there's not. But when you do have uh, a wealthy class in the city and you have a huge, you have a number of people who are making a whole lot of money and a lot of, a lot of others that aren't making any money, and you have this inequality, there is going to be this sense that somebody is on the take uh, or they're getting special favors. And the, the polling shows that you know developers and the downtown business interests are not trusted and they are looked upon as the ones who are getting the favors and are causing the, the inequality in the city. David, and then Wes. So, so I was, <clears throat> uh, um, if, if this program is successful uh, um, and we've issued $100 vouchers to 415,000 voters, uh, uh, we have a lot of good potential liability of uh, $41 million. Uh, um, so, how do we pay for it? Well, there, first off, there's a limit on how much money the city can distribute to candidates. Once that limit has been reached, then there's no more money to be distributed. So, uh, and the, the amount, um, so by, by which the levy has been set, um, the tax, the uh, property tax levy, has been very carefully looked at because we know that not everyone is going to turn in their vouchers. Some people won't even get them because they've moved or whatever. So that issue has been looked at carefully and, um, and between not everybody turning in their vouchers and the limit, the, the limit on how much money can be dispersed. Um, I think we feel pretty comfortable that it's it's going to work out. There's also a limit on each candidate, participating candidate spending as well. So yes. Which yes. would also pro provide a limit as well. Yeah. Uh, Liz and then Mary again. So I've got so many questions, it's really hard to pick one, but I'm, I'm done. <clears throat> Councilmember Badshaw um, stated that you're generally in favor of I-22, however, she had difficulties with the three-year limit on lobbying and um, also with a limitation that I-22, 122 puts on the number of years a consultant needs to be here. Was it that you have to be here more than a year in order to consult on? <coughs> focus on the one, what happens after it passes, it goes back to council and then those, are those issues compromised out? No. Okay. So. It's, in the, it's in the initiative. Um, what can be compromised is if, for example, not enough candidates make use of the public funding, or too many candidates, or they find out that the money that has been identified as the amount that a candidate can spend is too low or too high, the uh, Seattle Ethics and Elections Commission can make those uh, changes. But as far as the main elements of the uh, proposal, um, I think Tim Burgess made that clear on um, the day that the city council looked at it, and the proposal was accepted, um, the initiative was accepted for the ballot, 
that it was too late to make those kinds of amendments that yes. Sally brought up. I mean, yeah. Why? What is central about the lobby? The term, the, I call it double tipping. But, but what is central about that? I think what's central is that when you leave a public office where you have been uh, regulating the corporations and the interests that have come before you, and then you go out and you go to work for them, you have a particular, you have a special relationship with the people that you know in the bureaucracy, whether it's department heads, department staff, uh, legislative staff, public policy people, that you can go back to them very easily because you have that relationship. And I think um, there was a big expose in the New York Times this uh, last year, and uh, King TV did kind of an expose. It included um, attorney generals of a number of states that this is the And just a quick point of clarification, there's a current one-year logging ban now. It extends it to three. Yeah, okay. Mayor? Um, I wonder what kind of support candidates have to demonstrate in order to qualify for this, and then to which basis does it apply? Is it just city council or school board or? It, it applies to city council, uh, city attorney, and the mayor. Okay. So all elected offices in city the city. Wide, city right, wide. right. And Jeff and Joseph, maybe you can help me on the, uh, what the number of, there is a number of contributions that have to be uh, uh, recruited, solicited. For oh, all to show the broad base of the shares. Yeah. Um, it's 600 for, for mayor, I believe, and 150 for district for districts. Yeah. Oh, the district selections. Yeah. Districts yeah. are last. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay, right. Yeah. And it's up to um, $100. Uh, but then there's a limit to the amount, to the total amount before you have to um, just say no to all the people that want and, to and contribute if you. Go over, if you go over that amount mm -hmm. and you're getting public financing, you just don't get the amount of public financing. Mm -hmm. so. But the, the public financing is the $25 vouchers, right? Yes. Right. right. That's, yes. Yeah, there's, there's no additional. No, there's no yeah. issue. Right. Strategically, it would still be good to be pulling them in, even if you're over the amount and you're not getting the money because you're keeping them. You keep it from other candidates? Woo! You flagged this really well. I can't be transferred. But I think the, the, the summary statement is that uh, a hobby candidate, a good space guy, uh, yeah. would not be able to get the vouchers unless they were able to. Actually, raise small dollar contributions from right. people. first. Yeah, okay. yeah first. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Summer and yeah. then you have, to, of time. you have to qualify yeah. first before you ever start mm -hmm. drawing on the public. Yeah. Summer? So, one thing I noted when the person who was there for no prior to 22 is that he mentioned a few endorsements he had, and they seemed to be pretty squarely special interests. Do you know where the no, um, the no push is getting their money? Um, well, one of their, uh, the, one of the uh, groups that they're working with are, is a group that um, has represented uh, the payday uh, lenders and and downtown business interests, the chamber. But, you know, one thing about uh, Initiative 122, it has a number of, of responsible, credible uh, organizations. Fuse, Win Win Network, Fix Democracy First, League of Women Voters, um, uh, Asian Pacific Islanders uh, Coalition, Way at Washington can. I mean, there's a whole range of interests that represent a really wide diversity of organizations. Right, so 
we're about out of time. If you want to take 30 seconds for a closing statement. Well, you know, public financing has been in the Democratic platform since uh, I can remember. And I'm pretty old, so it's kind of <laughs> 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 And so this is one of my, you know, personal things about supporting Initiative 122. But I also feel like our democracy is really at a critical time in this country. And so we need to do something about it. This is a good thing to do. Great. Thank you.